Good afternoon, Revolution Church. This is Moses. How are you? Man, it's beautiful out today. Another incredible day here in Central Florida. Man, are we are we fortunate to be able to live here or what? Man, it is absolutely gorgeous outside. Let me just check and see what this is. Man, 84 degrees. Partly cloudy. See the sun. See some beautiful puffy clouds. Man, look at that. That beautiful lake right there on my way up to the office right now. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Very fortunate to live here and very fortunate to live here with you and enjoying doing this thing called church together. Man, it's good. Hey, listen, I want to encourage you. Um, you know, the, this country is, man, we're going through it and, 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 and businesses are shutting down like crazy and unemployment's through the roof and Man, it just took such a turn. It was seemed like everything was kind of going pretty well here for a while in our country. And then this coronavirus thing happened. And, and people got mixed feelings about it. Politicians have mixed feelings about it. Christians have mixed feelings about it. Doctors have mixed feelings about it. Scientists have mixed feelings about it. Family members have mixed families, uh, mixed feelings about it. Everyone's all up in arms. It's crazy, man. Crazy. Can I just remind you of something? This isn't the first time or the last time this kind of thing has happened. And I'm telling you right now, if I know Jesus at all, and I, man, I'm hoping I know him better now than I did five, ten years ago. But if I know Jesus at all, he ain't freaking out about this. Like, you didn't go, man, I didn't see that one coming. You know, that's not the case. And so, uh, you know, I just want to encourage you, like, our, if you're not freaking out, and we're, we are, we're supposed to be living in him, like, so that means we're not supposed to be freaking out. So we're not supposed to have a spirit of fear. We're supposed to have a spirit of, of power and love and a sound mind. That means our mind should be set and not freaking out and going all over the place. And every time we hear something, we freak out. And I believe this and I believe that and I don't know what to do. Hey, Steve, what's up? Listen, that's not the mind of a Christian. So the Bible that you that you own, I hope you read every single day, says lots of things in it. And, and, and all too often, the stuff in the Bible, even to Christians, well-meaning Christians, it, it's like rhetoric. But at some point, it has to become reality right? It has to become reality. And here's one of the realities that we find in scripture. And this applies to you if you've bent the knee to Christ. It says in the scripture that you have the mind of Christ. That means you're supposed to think about things the way Jesus thinks about things. And Jesus ain't freaked out about COVID-19. Okay? At all. And so you're not supposed to freak out about it. And part of having a sound mind is saying, listen, I've read the scriptures, I understand what the truth is, and I'm going to live that out, no matter if there's COVID-19, 20, 21, or 22. It doesn't make any difference. It doesn't make any difference who's in the office of the White House. It doesn't make any difference what your mama thinks. God's word is true, no matter what. No matter what nation you live in, no matter what year it is, whether you're a Democrat, Republican, you live in the North, you live in the South, it doesn't make any difference. God's word is true. And so if you want God's word, okay, let me put it this way. If you want the promise in Romans 8, 28, that everyone loves, that everything works out for the good to those who love the Lord, called to his purpose. Like if you want things to work out for the good, you got to be living according to his purpose. It's part of the verse. You can't have half it, not the other. Okay. Here's his purpose. Think like him. Talk like him. Act like him. Go be sent to evangelize the world like him. Be like him, right? That's what we're supposed to do. Let me think, we'll put this thing on charge. Hold on a second. I don't want to lose you. Hold on. This is right. Real high tech stuff right here, man. High budget filming. So, hey, Darlis. So we got to think like him. All right. So don't freak out about this thing. I'm not going to tell you to take your mask off and go kiss everybody. 
That's not what I'm telling you. I'm telling you, you need to make up a make a decision on your own of what living without fear. You got to think about what it means to be part of the church of Jesus Christ. Is being part of the church of Jesus Christ means sitting at home? Now I understand if you're sick, like listen, forget COVID for a second. If you're like super sick, don't come to church and get everybody sick. Don't go to work and get everybody sick. Don't send your kid who's sick to school and get all the other students and the teachers sick. Like don't do that, that's decency. That's manners, mama taught you, right? Do that. But if you're an everyday person, everyday Joe like myself, pretty healthy guy, you know, whatever. He said, gather and encourage one another, especially now since the time is short. And across the country, churches, congregations, and leaders, pastors, elders, bishops, deacons, all that, have closed their church for the sake of being politically correct. One worried about what people will think when they see us gathering. He said to gather. Do you know that in the state of California right now, listen, listen, loved ones. And if you don't live in California, it doesn't mean it doesn't apply to you because if it's gotta happen in one state before it can happen in two, and it's gotta happen in two before it can happen in 50. In the state of California right now, not only are they saying churches have to be closed, but part of that is they've specifically said you cannot baptize people and you can't take communion because that violates social distancing. Think about that. These are precious commands from Jesus to his church to go make disciples and baptize them, right? And the government is saying you can't. Now listen, loved ones. Before you go throwing up Romans 13, Romans 13, yeah. Get it, read it, understand it, appreciate it, and follow it. But just because the government is ordained of God, that doesn't mean governments always make the right choices. And just like I have the I'm a Christian, so I have, the, I have the Spirit of God living in me. I mean, He lives in me. And I still don't make the right decision all the time. I still sin. And so do you. So just because someone is ordained of God and blessed of God and indwelled by God doesn't mean they're always going to make the right decision. That's why the Scriptures say, since we live by the Spirit, let the Spirit guide every part of your life. Because those that are of God are still not always unilaterally making the right decision that honors God. So when the government that's ordained of God messes up, that doesn't mean you lay over and go, okay, no. The government told the apostles to shut up. And what did they say? Do you think we're supposed to obey man or God? I cannot stop telling of what I've seen and heard. There's a time when the church has to elevate the word of God above the law of the land. Because the law of the land, which is supposed to be good and right, doesn't always jive with the Bible. I mean, we all know that. And so when the law of the land, and I'm talking about the law of every land, every country, right? Because the Bible's written to every country, every, every tribe, tongue, and nation, right? And there are, there are governments of nations around the world that are appointed by God, ordained of God, that say Christianity is illegal. Never mind telling you how you can worship like they're trying to tell us right now which is wrong. Because if you tell someone to worship in a way that's contrary to God's word, then you're telling them they can't worship. Okay? Because we don't get to make up how we worship. God gets to decide how we worship. Okay? And so we're, we're, if you want to worship God, you worship God the way he says, not the way you say or your mama said or the president said or the governor said. No. You do it the way God's word says. So can somebody say Amen. Hey, Pastor John. Hey, Helen. Miss Helen, how are you? Okay, so there are, there are nations out there that are telling people 
how and when and if they can worship Christ. Like, at some point, the government has to be held accountable. Like, if they're telling you to do something that's contrary to God's word, you don't say yes to that. You don't. Now, I, I would just, I would say this. If, if our government and every scientist and every doctor across the board I'm parked by the way Miss Helen if every doctor and every scientist across the board unilateral everyone said listen if we don't all close every store and close every shop and close every church and do all that if we don't close the the scientific fact without a question is that we will all die if we don't close everything for the next three weeks. Okay? It, if they did that, then I could understand why everyone, including the church, because it's, if you, you can't minister to people, everybody's dead. Okay? And, and Americans, like, who have the constitutional right to, to have their own business, a capitalist society, and the, the state's not supposed to govern private business, and... First Amendment rights and all that. I get all that. We would all gladly waive our rights if we absolutely knew everyone's going to die if we don't quarantine. The problem with that is that that's not the case. You got doctors on one side saying, put on your mask, wash your hands, don't go out, six feet. Get it. But then there's just as many doctors over here going, no, 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 take your mask off. We need bacteria and viruses to build up immunity. Stop breathing into the thing and, and sucking back your carbon dioxide. And you need to go to the beach because there's, there's minerals and vitamins and the salt and in the water and the sand and the vitamin D from the sun. And you need all that. And we need to exchange viruses and bacteria because that's our immune system. And if you wear a mask for a long time, your immune system's down. And if you take it off, then we're all going to get sick because opportune viruses are going to jump all over over you like okay is that right I don't know I'm not a doctor it's all I know is that right now we've got half the scientists scientific world saying one thing and half saying another and based on that speculation we've completely shut down a nation and Moses just me it's not necessarily a position of our church as a whole but just me, I think that's madness. Madness. There are 328 million people in this country. And every single one of you is valuable and has worth because you're made in the image of God. And of those 60,000 people plus that have passed, they will be missed. They have value, absolute infinite value. But to shut down 328 million people where 30 million plus are now unemployed, don't know how to pay their rent, can't pay their mortgages, car payments are going bad, can't pay their electric bills, have blown through all their savings. Now we're starting to hear stories of suicide increasing because of the pressure. Excuse me. Enough's enough. Enough's enough. It's time to open. But listen, I'm not a I'm not an economist and I'm not a politician. So I'll leave that stuff. If you're a store owner, a business owner, that's up to you. My personal opinion is that you need to open your business. But that's not what I've been given charge over. I've been given the amazing and sometimes weighty responsibility of, 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 of leading a church, a local expression of the church. And I'm telling you that we haven't closed. We're not going to close because God's word says to, to gather and to break bread with one another, including communion. So no one's going to tell us not to, because God says to, you know, then the great commission, Jesus said, all authority is mine. All authority is mine. Jesus said. And so if his word says to go do something, there's no one else that can tell you otherwise. All authority in heaven and on earth belongs to Jesus Christ alone. 
And so he said, go do something, we're doing it. So we're open. We're not closing every day just about there at our church. We have gatherings of some kind. Full worship services, Bible studies, men's groups, ladies groups, disciple groups, all of that. And we're not closing. And I would just say to all those other church leaders out there that at some point you've got to recognize, and I love you all and I respect you all, but my, I have to say this. The, the Bible that we all read says some things and we need to be obedient to those things and not choose political correctness okay nice being nice and polite is not a fruit of the spirit okay and and so don't we not to treat it as such we are called to gather his people to make disciples to study the word together to pray together to to break bread together to fellowship, which is always together, of course. All those things are to be done. We're to lay hands on the sick. If the sick, okay, yeah. how can I lay hands on them if I have to social distance? How can the how can people call upon the elders of the church to, if they're sick, to have them anointed with oil and, and have them lay hands on them and, 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 and pray for them so they can be healed? Hey, mama. If, if we're not allowed to get close to one another, so, okay, so the church of Jesus Christ is not dead. We're alive and well because he lives in us. It's the people. But the focal point, the, 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 the beacon of hope that is placed, that God has placed in each community, right, that has a cross on the sign, that has a name on the bill on the sign that says, here, here's God's people right here. It's closed. And the people don't have a place to look to to find hope. And so we need to be open, okay? We need to be open. Our communities need us to be open. Praying for them, praying for one another, worshiping Jesus, celebrating him. Listen, generously giving towards helping the people in the community. And I'm telling you now, loved ones, there, the economy is such that there's going to be a greater need for the church to step in and help people in great times of need right now than ever before in our lifetime in our lifetime. We're still trying to get out of the, the recession of 2007 through 2009. We're still living in it. And now our economy has dipped worse than it was back then. So we've gone from a bad situation into a terrible one. And the church of Jesus Christ needs to transcend all of that and needs to be that beacon of hope, that place of life and life to a community that God has placed it in because the people are going to need us. And so church leaders, I beg with I beg you I beg you open your church open your church listen it doesn't have to be the same exact thing it was before because it wasn't what it was before including at our church wasn't perfect and we need to get better we need to reach people through the internet and, and, and Facebook and all that I get all that but not to forsake the gathering be open be available doors swung wide open so people can come and find someone who can give them the message of hope and be there for practical things to help them in their time of great need. So please, please be open. May 30th, I believe it is, is 50 days after Passover, that's Pentecost. Pentecost Sunday, I think it's the 30th. Listen, on Pentecost, you know where they were? You know where the Christians were? All together in one accord. So maybe, just maybe you need to open it on that day and let's get the church together and just see if God will reignite the church and, and, and bring some revival to our community and to our nation so listen Lake County churches whoever's listening to me let's set the example for the rest of our state let's get our churches open let's let's live without fear let's let's be let's be wise let's keep our places clean let's encourage good 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 hygiene but, but let's get our churches open get them open everybody get them open and listen if you're a if you're if you're a, a, a Christian and your church isn't open listen if you feel stirred of the Holy Spirit that our, your church should be open let your pastor know let him know that you support him because he, he's you know what I can tell you one thing about your pastor he wants his church open he does he loves you and he wants to be with you and he wants to worship with you and he wants to minister to you and he wants to bless you and teach you. He wants that. 
and, and he needs to know that you're behind him. So let him know. And, and if for some reason, you know, they just can't receive it and they can't open, listen, get some people that you know and gather. Do it in your house, do it at the park, do it on your boat, do it at your clubhouse, do it somewhere, but gather, gather. And, and, and study the word of God together and worship and enjoy the goodwill of all the people. Give generously, love completely, unconditionally, pray for one another endlessly. Just do it, man. Let's just be the church. Let's be the church. All right? I love you all. Mama, I love you. Joseph's, what's up, man? Hope you're having a good day at work. Hope you're in a uh, front-end loader today, not a, uh, not a shovel. Jeff, love you, brother. It's good seeing you and, and Colleen the other day at the uh, One Flight Up. It's good to see you. Uh, who else is here? Steve, yeah, I don't know. YouTube. We're on YouTube. <laughs> We're on YouTube. But anyway, love you all. I hope you're having a great day. Share this video. If you think this is of value with, uh, for, for anybody, share it. Get it out there, man. Get it out there. Let's be a voice of hope to our country, all right? Love you all. And what's today? So today's Wednesday. We'll see some disciple groups at our church tonight, men's and women's disciple groups. We'll see you at 6 o'clock if you're signed up and part of that. We'll see you tonight at 6 o'clock to, to have dinner together and then worship together, music. We'll sing, and then we'll study God's Word together. And then, um, yeah, I'll see you guys hopefully just a bunch on, on Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. Love you all. If there's anything, hey, you got a shovel. All right, Joe. Sorry. Bye, Miss Helen. Uh, listen, if you need a church to go to where there's some people, bring it on, man. Revolution Church, Sunday morning, 10 o'clock. Plenty of room for you. Hey, Joan. How are you? We'll see y'all. Bye.